It's also worth considering Abraham's strange encounter with a man who was both a king and a priest. He ruled over the city of Salem, which later became Jerusalem. When Abraham was returning from rescuing his family after they had been kidnapped, he arrived near Salem with the spoils of the enemy. Melchizedek was a king of Salem, Jerusalem, and a priest of the Most High God. His name means King of Righteousness. Melchizedek's sudden appearance and disappearance in Genesis is somewhat puzzling. Abraham was met by the strange figure of Melchizedek, who was both a king and a priest, a very unusual combination that had never been seen before in Israel. This king-priest brought bread and wine to Abraham and his troops as refreshments, and Abraham gave him a tenth of all the spoils of the battle, a tithe of the treasure. According to the New Testament, Jesus is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is mentioned again in Psalms, but we aren't alerted to how much attention we should give him until we see his name again in the book of Hebrews. For as much as the author of Hebrews mentions Melchizedek, we know it is worthwhile to learn more about who he is and what he was about. Every word in the Bible should be revered because we know it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So who really was Melchizedek, who was an imperfect foreshadow to Jesus, and why should we care? Who was Melchizedek? First, the name Melchizedek means King of Righteousness. Then also King of Salem means King of Peace. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2. With a name like that, we can expect great things. But little is revealed in our introduction to the revered Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. Kings who were once allies waged war in the Siddim Valley, and during this time, Abram's nephew Lot was taken prisoner. When Abram learns of this, he sets out to reclaim his relative and his belongings. This is a great demonstration of Abram's power. But what is most important in this passage is that Melchizedek is clearly superior to Abram. Melchizedek in Genesis And the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Shedorlaomer and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing, from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshcol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Genesis chapter 14 verses 17 to 24 Melchizedek blesses Abram and is a faithful priest. The king of Salem came to meet Abram as he returned from his victory over Kedorlaomer, king of Sodom. Melchizedek was the king of Salem and a high priest of God. While the king of Sodom is haggling over the plunder Abram has just acquired, Melchizedek arrives with bread and wine and speaks a blessing over Abram. Following the blessing, the first recorded tithe is given to a priest of high rank. We can infer from the praise that Melchizedek received that he served as a faithful holy representative. We don't know how he came to know the Lord, because there is no scriptural revelation on the subject, but he refers to him as El Elyon the God Most High. 
Abram and Melchizedek part ways, and we don't hear the name of the priest again until it is uttered in the Messianic Psalm chapter 110. Arrayed in holy splendor, your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. A high priest for all. The author of Hebrews contrasts Old Testament heroes and practices repeatedly before revealing profoundly how Jesus is the better and truer fulfillment of the Hebrews' beloved traditions and patriarchs. The Levitical priest would represent Israel in front of God. They became priests through lineage, which did not guarantee righteous living. The Old Testament repeatedly predicts that the Messiah will be a descendant of David through the line of Judah. There are genealogies in Genesis, but there is no record of Melchizedek's lineage, either before or after him. Melchizedek was a priest in an order that had no beginning and will never end because Jesus is its greatest priest. The good news is that Jesus is not a Levitical priest for the Israelites, but a Melchizedek priest, which means he is a priest for all. Though promise and law once separated the Jew and the Gentile through Christ, all of humanity was given the opportunity to be drawn near. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For he himself is our peace, who was made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Jesus is superior to every Levite office, including priesthood, because like the first high priest Melchizedek, his priesthood extends to every nation, tribe, and tongue, and Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22. We can't get so caught up in the stories of our individual lives that we lose sight of the bigger picture, the meta-narrative story that God is weaving. Melchizedek is merely a thread in the story of soul salvation through Christ, and that thread highlights a more comprehensive view of our glorious Savior. Melchizedek is significant. Any glimpse in scripture that provides a more complete picture of Jesus is beautiful and true. He is the perfect one, the ancient of days, the eternal priest. A priest of a different order. The book of Hebrews then compares Melchizedek to Christ, pointing out that Jesus Christ is a priest who is not of the Levitical order. He does not work in the earthly tabernacle but rather in the heavenly realities. Why? He belongs to a different order of priests, an eternal order with no beginning or end. Jesus, who was descended according to the flesh from the tribe of Judah, could not serve in the priesthood that Moses describes, namely the Levitical priesthood. Yet that does not mean our Lord is unqualified to be our high priest. Rather, it means his high priesthood derives from a different and superior priestly lineage. If we approach God through Jesus' priestly ministry, we can be certain that our lives, like his, will be eternal. Knowing that Christ has an eternal priesthood assures us that we will be secure in him forever. Our salvation is based on the power of the eternal high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Christ Jesus our Lord, to preserve us, not in our ability to persevere. To understand Melchizedek properly, we must think in terms of types. A type is a symbol of something that will happen in the future that serves as a foreshadowing. A type is an Old Testament representation of a New Testament truth. For example, the blemished lamb offered on the Jewish altar represented the coming Christ who would be slain for sin. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 1 to 20.
For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed those who are of the sons of Levi who received the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, of necessity there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come, not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness, for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the beginning of a better hope, through which we draw near to God, and inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath. There have been others in your life, whether clergy or not, who sought to bring you to God, but they too needed a priest. Some needed a priest more than you did. They, like you, were sinful. Not so with Jesus. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 For such a high priest was fitting for us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Melchizedek supplied a powerful metaphor because like Christ, Number 1. His leadership was based on righteousness, not selfishness. This king's name meant righteousness over Salem, peace. Number 2. His leadership was superior, not mediocre. He is pictured as a superior and respected leader, to whom even Abraham gave a tithe. Number 3. His leadership was universal not national. He wasn't limited to a priesthood in a single country. Number four. His leadership was personal, not hereditary. He didn't lead because he was born into the right family or had the right genes. Number five. His leadership is eternal, not temporary. He abides as a priest perpetually, just like Christ.